Jesus We trade and chase the crowns We see the walls come down This generation
What a curious expression. Incense. Do you know why we're singing that? It's because it's straight off the page of the Bible. Because the Bible says that when we pray or praise, it's like, it's like incense, the way it goes up to heaven. It's like when you smell something or you hear something and you're like, shh, 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 what's that, what's that? What an amazing picture that right now heaven is shushing each other, saying, wait a minute, shush, can you hear that? And it's not really the volume of our voice, it's the heart that the voice is the overflow of. That's what captures heaven. A heart that would shout is what captures heaven. And so that incense, that picture, is this idea that when your heart just cannot be contained anymore and comes out through your mouth, that gets the attention of heaven. So that's what we're doing, we're worshipping. We're going to carry on worshipping by bringing our tithes and offerings. Would you guys at the front go back to your seat? When you get there, grab an offering envelope. If you're already in your seat, you can reach under and take your offering envelope out. There is a QR code on the back of the envelope. If you wanna give digitally in this service today, you can scan that QR code. There's a QR code on the screen as well, if that's helpful. This envelope, of course, you can use to put cash in or you could write your card details on the back if you wanna give by card. But really what we're saying is, let's give in faith. So while you're doing that, consider this. Yes, so let me read you something from Hebrews 12, verse 1 to 3, while you're filling in your offering envelopes. It says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a huge crowd of witnesses to the life of faith, let us strip off every weight that slows us down, especially the sin that so easily trips us up, and lets us run, let us run with endurance the race God has set before us. We do this by keeping our eyes on Jesus, the champion who initiates and perfects our faith. Because of the joy awaiting him, he endured the cross, disregarding its shame, and now he is seated in the place of honor besides God's throne. Think of all the hostility he endured from sinful people. Then you won't become weary and give up. As you're filling in your offering envelopes, I really just want to encourage you to keep your eyes on Jesus. Don't try and work it all out, just keep your eyes on Him. As you choose to be obedient and give the 10% that God tells us to do and give the offering that that you feel God has put on your heart, I, I want to encourage you, don't try and work out the other 90% and how that's going to work. Because when you keep your eyes on Jesus, He works it, ha- it out. Like He did when, when Jesus fed the 5,000 with the bread and the fish, Jesus worked it out. He fed everybody there and there was leftovers. So, so don't try and work it out. I want to encourage you, keep your eyes on Him. God's maths are not the same as our maths at all they are supernatural and he makes everything work so i really want to encourage you be obedient and fix your eyes on jesus today fantastic well we're going to pray because as zoe's just said this is a supernatural moment where we put our hearts our whole hearts into god's hands so Zoe, would you pray and then we're going to pass the bucket down the road before we move on in the service yeah god i really do thank you for this amazing opportunity to give to you and lord god i pray that we don't hold back but we give everything to you as we give our offering god i pray that you would multiply it and use it to build your kingdom god i thank you for everybody here and as they sow god i pray that you would bless them and they would reap a harvest in their lives in Jesus name amen amen all right we're going to pass a bucket down the road that's for you to put your offering envelope in make sure that you do that don't miss it nudge the person next to you say it's coming the bucket is coming very good hey can we give it up for our amazing campus pastors pastor Paul and Zoe absolutely amazing well my name is Joel My name's Amy and we want to take some time this morning to say a big hello to you guys. You've made it to our 10.30 service in the room or online. Great to see you online. Everyone just turn around, just give a little wave to online. Just turn around, the camera's back there. Hey, great to see online church. You're on holiday right now watching church by the pool. Great job for putting it first. And we want to say a massive welcome 
to everyone, but particularly if this is your first time at Audacious Church, we want to give you a very special welcome. And we actually have a gift designed just for you. Yeah, so it's just this little orange bag. At first, this is what it looks like. But inside, we've got some biscuits. Nice for a mid-service snack. We've got a cup that we can fill with any beverage that we've got in the lounge. So tea, coffee, water, juice. You come and join us in Connections Land later. We can fill that up for you. And our storybook that tells you all about the life of Audacious Church, what has been, but what we also are currently doing and what you can get connected into. So it's an amazing thing that you need to take home with you. It's worth getting one. So to get your hands on one, if you are new today, just put your hands in the air and our amazing hosting team are going to bring one to you right now. Great to see you. Yeah, if we're going to clap, I like that. I like that. Add a little sway in if you're feeling really good about it, if you're having a great day in the house of the Lord. Hands going up all over the place. Great to see you. Welcome to church. Just over here. Great to see you guys. So good. Hey, so that is your ticket to the Connections Lounge. All the goodies, all the treats in there. But if you head out on the doors on your right turn right, we've got a team of people at the end of the service wanting to meet you. And me and Amy, Amy and I. We'll be there waiting to say hello to you. So please come over, otherwise that could get really awkward. Yes, come say hi. We're there to say hi to you in the Connections Lounge. We've got coffee with your name on it and we want to welcome you to church. Hey, look to the screens because we've got a little bit of information about something awesome called Audacious College. You're going to love this. Check it out. One way that I've grown this year has definitely been in my worship leading. Uh, I got the opportunity to lead at Youth Night, which was really special. And I feel like over the course of this year, I've got a lot more confident with worship. What I'm really proud of this year was the Easter project. And it was a collaboration and it was just so good for me to develop my skill. It was just an honor that I could be able to take a lead on one of the VTs. This year has also just um, allowed me to grow a lot more in confidence. It was the first time leaving home um, and just navigating that. Um, but Audacious was a fab place to do that. Lectures as a whole are just so great because you get to meet a variety of different lecturers who just all have different styles and they just all come with such God words. The environment of Monday night courses is super cool because we get to have church family also come in to the course and it's not just college team and students, which I think creates a different atmosphere. I think if I was talking to my day one self, um, I, would, I would say not to worry about the year um, and just to dive in. I didn't really have an expectation when I started college, but over the, the course of this year, God has started to reveal to me what he wants in my life and what he wants me to do with uh, his plan. I think giving yourself to God is a, an act of sacrifice. And when you join in college with no expectations, you allow him to open up the space for him and to let him work. Keep pressing in in all the moments and to like take advantage of um, the space that I got to have with people and with the Lord in, in a new ministry context. Um, I walked into college with uh, a few doubts about prophetic words I'd had in the past, particularly in the area of worship, um, but also just about myself and who I am. And I think college and God has really been there for me throughout the whole process. And I, I wish that I'd known that sooner. Um, and I wish that I'd felt, I guess, more confident in my calling sooner.
some of you are called to kill Goliath. I would tell you that it's too late, 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 late. You no longer just sit there and participate and just be okay with it. No, no, we gotta understand the time for silence is over. It's time to make it loud. Well, fantastic. If you don't know, then this week we had our Youth Conference Fearless Co. in here. It was crazy. If you weren't here, you should thank God you weren't here because you've never, ever worshipped God in a sauna like this week. It was absolutely crazy, but we had an incredible time. Massive shout out to our youth pastors, Joel and Amy. Can we thank them for leading the conference so well this week? You did so good, guys. We're so proud of you. And uh, i got to be honest, I absolutely loved just sitting on the sidelines and watching and championing on the next generation. Thank you to everybody in church who volunteered, who also served throughout the week as well. Absolutely brilliant. And uh, we're so excited about that. I want to take a moment before we introduce our speaker this morning to pray for this nation and to pray for the situation in the Ukraine and also down in Israel and Gaza as well. So why don't you stand to your feet across this place? We, uh, we don't want to get into, you know, social commentary on things, especially when uh, many times it's hard to know what the truth is, where's half-truth, et cetera, et cetera. But one of the things that the Bible does say we should do is we should pray. And the Bible clearly instructs us we should pray for the peace of Israel and therefore everything surrounding that. We need to be praying for the situation in the Ukraine. Let's not get tired in our prayer. The Bible says we'll reap a harvest if we don't give up. And so let's just keep praying. Let's keep praying. Let's keep believing. Just this week I was on online with some of our pastors in the Ukraine and talking about what's going on over there and they're sharing their hearts. We all also need to pray for Russia as well. Uh, lots happening. Hey, we need to be praying for the families in Southport. We need to really be praying for the people in Southport. Um, people who are grieving. And uh, of course, you would have seen more protests yesterday in Manchester and increasing around the place. The only help, the only hope is Jesus. Come on, I said the only help and the only hope is Jesus. He is the Prince of Peace. And I want to say that as many of you, thousands of you in our church have experienced the peace that only the presence of God brings, that's what we want our nation and the nations to experience. So come on, lift your hands to heaven across this place as we pray. Father, we want to thank You for the fact that You are a good God. Jesus, we know that You are the Prince of Peace. And Lord, our hearts break with the families of Southampton, of Southport, Lord, who've experienced just those horrible atrocities. And Lord, we do pray for Your peace and kindness to come in the middle of a hellish situation. Lord, I pray that somehow may Your glory shine out of the midst of the crazy darkness over there, we pray in the name of Jesus. Lord, we do pray for peace to come across our nation. We pray for our Prime Minister as he leads this nation and this people of this nation. And Father, Father, we pray You'd give him wisdom. And we pray, God, would You continue to put men and women of God in and around our Prime Minister so that the decisions are wise and godly decisions as we spoke about last week. Father, we pray for the situation with the Ukraine and Russia, Lord, with Israel and, and with the Gaza there and Palestine. Lord, we do ask for a long-lasting peace to come. Lord, we need You. We need You now more than ever. Thank You for the message that Pastor Noah is about to bring about Your presence. And I just do pray that the abundance of God that shines through the presence of God would be made manifest in all of our lives. And Father, also in our church right now, for anybody who's standing in this service, anyone who's in turmoil, anyone who's walking through difficulty, God, as they walk through this challenge, may they know that You're with them. And I pray for Your peace and Your comfort to come and strength to come to every single person, I pray in Jesus' Name. And everybody said, come on, everybody shouted. Amen, amen, amen. 
Well, it's so good to have you with us in church today. As you stay standing for a moment, welcome to everybody joining us online from around the world. It's good to have you with us in uh, in our central Manchester service, our second of four services today. So good to have you with us. And we're super honoured to have all the way from Melbourne, Australia, Pastor Noah Walker, who is the youth pastor of Planet Boom, which is the youth ministry of Planet Shakers in Australia. You all know that Pastors Russell and Sam Evans are our pastors and, uh, and part of our family therefore as a church. And you've heard Pastor Russell and Neil, Sam on many occasions, but this is Pastor Russell's son-in-law, who's also the youth pastor, who has been preaching so brilliantly this week at Fearless Co. We're so thrilled. And the other thing is this as well, I just need to say that he's a great guy behind the scenes. What you see is what you get. There's actually no guile, there's nothing hidden. He's just a perfect uh, character and uh, can honestly sort of, you know, shout him out here. And also he's clearly missing his wife because he's he's wearing his wife's blouse on stage today. So come on everybody, welcome Pastor Noah Walker. Come on, if you're gonna clap, clap for Jesus, come on. Make it loud in this place for Jesus. We give You all the glory, we give You all the honour, we give You all the praise and all the worship because You're worthy of it all, in Jesus' Name. I wanna honour uh, Pastor Glenn and Pastor Sophia, thank you. It's, uh, you know, I was talking to Pastor Glenn out the back. Um, it's hard to put into words really the gratitude that I have for God. Because if you knew what God brought me out of and brought me into, you would understand that this is a miracle and this is favour and the blessings of God at work in a young person really like myself that was saved and set free and delivered. If you've been saved and set free and delivered in this place, just give God a clap offering just for five seconds. We glorify You, Jesus. We magnify You. You are good and You are good all the time. I wanna honour and I want us to stay standing and honour Pastor Glenn and Pastor Sophia Barrett for everything that they do. Thank you so much for allowing me to be here. Uh, I know I'm a young, young man, but um, he's taken a, given me a great opportunity and it is a privilege to be able to be here. But uh, God is good, man, and He's been good um, all throughout this week. And I just felt, to, again, as I got these last service, there are hundreds and hundreds of our young people, our children that are testifying about the goodness of God. And this, this is not just a moment, because I know a lot of people go, oh, young people are young people and they have ups and downs. We all have ups and downs. Five of us understand that, that's okay. But young people being touched and encountered by the power of God. Listen, listen, this is unheard of. This is not a normal thing. So just again, I wanna praise God for all the testimonies that are coming out of the conference that we just had. God is good to the next generation. God wants to bless the next generation. God wants to empower the next generation. He's good. We lift our hands and we bow our heads. Lord, we thank You for Your presence here in this place. You're so good and You are so worthy to be praised and honoured and glorified. God, I think about the people that are in this room and that have been saved for many years and been set free for many years. God, I thank You for doing that. I thank You for the teenagers and even the young people and the people in here that have been saved for maybe less of the time. God, You are so faithful to all generations. And in all generations, this will be till the end of time. You are worthy of all the praise. You are worthy of all the glory. You are worthy of all the honour in every generation, at every age and in every stage of life. You are worthy of it all, Jesus. So we give You all the honour. 
Come on, would you lift your hands in this place? Oh, you're worthy, Jesus. You're worthy, Jesus. Come on, I need you to remember of the good things that God has done for you. Audacious church, from the things He took you out of. God is worthy. God is worthy of it all. You are worthy of all of our praise and all of our worship and all of the glory and all of the honour. We're just gonna sing this just for a little bit, but I just want us to step into a place of thanksgiving. So come on, will we lift our hands and will we sing this out? You're worthy of it all. Yes, you are. Yes, Lord. You're worthy of it all. Come on, that's it, audacious. Lift your hands and sing this out. You're worthy, you're worthy. You're worthy of it all. You're worthy of it all. For from you. Come on, would you let your praise and your worship arise day and night and day and give you this service, we give you this moment. And we ask God that your presence would invade this place like we've never seen before. I ask for heaven on earth. I ask for a taste of the glory. I ask for your power. I ask for miracles, signs and wonders in this place. And if you believe that audacious church, and if you're hungry and you are expected for a move of God, would you clap your hands and shout Amen and give God a praise that He's worthy of. Woo! God is good. And all the time, God is good. And all the time, amen, amen. You know, uh, before we get started, I, I felt I need to share my story because some of you don't know who I am. You might just be thinking there's this crazy kid that's just running around on stage at conference, um, running, a, running an absolute muck, doing, being a menace, whatever. But uh, I gotta explain to you the way that I am, the reason the way that I am. And uh, growing up, I, I didn't have a lot. That's why I'm grateful to be here. I didn't have much growing up. I had a family that was crazy. I had mum and dad who were in and out of jail. I grew up in a violent household. I saw things that no kid should have ever saw. I was abused. I watched my family get abused. I watched my mum be abused from my dad. And I, I saw things, crazy things that no kid should have ever seen. And from the age of 13 to 17, I was addicted to drugs every day. I was dealing, I was, I was mixed up in the wrong, wrong crowd. I was doing things that I shouldn't have done. But all of a sudden, say all of a sudden, in a moment with God, when I was 17 years old, I sat up the back of a youth camp, Planet Boom Youth Camp. And I walked down the front and I gave my heart to God. I was broken, I was lost, I was rejected, I was pushed to the side. But in a moment with God, I was restored with His love. I was empowered by the power of God and I was changed and I was never the same again. That's why He's worthy of all my praise. That's why it's important to remember where you come from. That's why it's important to remember the things that God took you out of and brought you into. I want you to clap your hands if you've been redeemed by the power of God. Yay! Yeah. That's, that's the reason the way I am, because I know 
my God, and I know what He did for me. Anybody thankful for God? Yeah, 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 just give me a wave. God is good and He's good all the time. But I had a word from, you to, uh, from God for you today and it's a really simple word, but it's on our heart at Planet Shakers. But I believe it's for this city and for such a time as this. And I want us to understand that as we release this word today, this is not just something that, that is, uh, um, you know, worked up or conjured up by a man or a bunch of people. This is God speaking to you. And sometimes when God speaks to you, it almost challenges certain things that you believe. But that's okay, because God does that. How many know that God challenges us sometimes to improve and to be better and to let go of things, amen? The word that I have for you today, my title is Living in Abundance. If I had a subtitle, it would be Living the Blessed Life. Who wants to live a blessed life? Five of us, that's okay. I said, who wants to live, in the, live a blessed life? You can take your seats. I had to research and I had to look up what abundance means and, 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 I, and I saw some amazing uh, meanings and some things that I believe that we can uh, hold on to today. And some of the meanings of abundance is to have ample quantity. In other words, to have a great amount of. Another meaning is to have great supply. Another meaning is also to be prosperous. Another meaning is to, to, to have immeasurable things that you, uh, the, the, an abundance that you can't even measure. It means to have more than enough. It means to have a plethora. I wasn't good at English in school, so that's a pretty big word for myself. Plethora and plenty of. It means to have affluence, efficiency. It also means to have influence as well. Sufficiency, it also means to thrive. A portion that overflows or runs over. Abundance means all of these things. And I believe that now more than ever, sometimes as we hear this word that has been released today, Sometimes our minds, and I can be honest with you, but as Pastor Russell released this word over our church today, uh, this year, prophetically, the year of abundance, sometimes our minds can go automatically to money. And sometimes we get afraid to think that we can live in this abundant life. And we get, we get all uppity and tight about what we can do and how blessed we can be. Let me declare over you today, you can live a blessed life. Five of us agree. There's a, I said you can live an abundant, prosperous, running over and an overflowing life. You can live that way. And I'll give you a few reasons and a few things that, uh, um, ways that you can do that. But the Bible says in 2 Corinthians 9 verse 8, it says, and God is able, everyone say God is able, to make all grace, every favour and earthly blessings, meaning we can be blessed here on earth. Come in abundance to you so that you may always under all circumstances, in other words, in every circumstance and in every season, regardless of whatever the need is, no matter how big, no matter how small the need is, have complete sufficiency in everything, being completely self-sufficient in Him and have an abundance for every good work and act of charity. Audacious church, you have the ability to live a blessed life. You know, and all across the world, in, in the church abroad and at large, sometimes we think of this life as a life that we can't live. That is wrong. That's actually a lie from the enemy. Sometimes when we talk about the blessings of God and the favour of God and prosperity, we almost shrink back. If we were to do this audacious church and if we were to shrink back as a people, we would be limiting the possibilities of God. 
let me tell you, I come from nothing anyway, but the way God can bless, the way God can have favour on a young person is endless and the possibilities are endless. Favour can be in your life. Turn to the person next to you and say, you're blessed. Turn to another person and say, you're highly favoured. I believe that abundance and prosperity and favour and blessings are coming your way this year. In this second half of the year and in the next coming months as we come around Christmas, I believe prosperity and I believe the blessings and I believe the favour and I believe that the abundance of God is coming your way, overflowing in your life this year. The reality is, is that there are many things and many ways on how to live a blessed life. The, the Bible tells us that, that the way to live a blessed life is by being in His presence. Firstly, let's just get this out of the way. The Bible also says that we were supposed to be blessed. How do I know that? Well, in Genesis, it's pretty easy and it's pretty simple, but it says, then God blessed them. You, 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 no matter what family you came from, no matter what background you have, God blessed them and He said, be fruitful and multiply. In other words, you were designed to be fruitful. I'm not just talking around, I'm not talking about children, amen. I'm not talking about different things. I'm talking about being fruitful in the blessings of God. God wants to bless you, why? Because He's a good Father. That's who He is. So some of us right now, we're even thinking as we're hearing this message and we're like, wow, prosperity gospel. No, I'm not talking about just money. I'm not talking about our finances and being blessed in that way. Although that's a, a, a representation and an overflow of what God does. Of course, God is good that way. But I'm talking about on the inside of us. I'm talking about prospering from the inside out. I'm talking about being blessed from the inside out. I'm talking about being favoured from the inside out. Anyone wanna live a blessed life in this place? Amen. Well, how do you live a blessed life? You gotta be in His presence. Psalms 84 verse four says, blessed, I love that word, blessed, and greatly favoured are those who dwell in your house. I'm gonna say that again because that should have had a few more amens on the back of that. Blessed and greatly favoured are those who dwell in your house and your presence. They will be singing your praises all day long. How do you become blessed? How do you live in the blessings? How do you live an abundant life? Well, it's easy. Be in the presence of God. You're here today. It's not just another ticking off. Perfect timing. Not another ticking off of a, of a box or another thing that we've just got to do by coming to church. It's like, yes, done. I can go now. I can have my day now. I can have my week now. I've done, I've done what I need to do. I just tick off church. Yes, I'm a great Christian. <laughs> I'm a really amazing Christian. I came to church this Sunday and I'm doing really well. <laughs> Yes, that's the start of it. Yes, that's good that you'll come into church, but guess what? You can live in the blessings of God, not just on a Sunday, but every single day. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday as well. You can live in the blessings of God. And how do we know this? Well, there's an amazing story in the Bible of Obed-Edom. And this amazing story is, is, is a part of David's story as well. But David dropped off the Ark of the Covenant, which was the presence of God and which represented the presence of God. And he left it there at Obed-Edom's house. And he walked away and he went back to his city. And what happened was, is he left the presence of God there. And for three months, he left it there. But for three months, Every person in that household, everything in that household, and I could imagine the presence of God being so powerful that people that walked by the presence of God, people that walked by Obed-Edom's house was blessed for three months. Now I said this in the last service, but I didn't finish school, so I'm, actually no. I, I like to say I graduated in year 10. Thank you. 
I like to say I graduated early because I was too smart for school. It's not true, I'm so sorry. (laughs) But I was never good with math, although I call myself a mathematician. But this is easy when you add these two things together, the equation and the sum and the equal to this is easy. What happens when you get in the presence of God? You're blessed. You have abundance. You have an overflow in your life. It's easy. So how do you live a blessed life? Well, you get in the presence of God. You stay connected in small groups. You get with the family. You pray together. You, 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 come on now. You eat together. You hang out together. This is a family of all different cultures. This is what happens when you live uh, in the presence of God. You live a blessed life. I I said this in the last service, but I think about all this stage and all the LEDs and all the, even this fan here, which is so helpful by the way, because it's very hot. All the things here, they are required and they access a different feature. With with, with, uh, the LED screens, they access this beautiful face here. Not really because apparently I'm wearing my wife's blouse anyways. But these things, the fan accesses a different feature, but the reality to all these things and accessing all that they have for us is they've got to be connected to something. And that's you and I. If we are, and we are to be a people that are connected to the presence of God, dug deep in the house of God, roots spreading deep in the house of God, you will be blessed and favoured. How do you live a blessed life? Well, there's this thing called generosity. Now this is almost like a swear word. Be generous. (gasps) Be generous. The Bible talks to us about it like this and it shows us this clear picture of generosity and living a blessed life. In Luke 6 verse 38, give and you will receive. Your gift will return to you in full. Press down, shaken together to make room for more. Running over and poured into your lap. The amount you give will determine the amount you get back. Another verse says in 2 Corinthians 9, 6, remember this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. In other words, whoever sows stingingly, if that's a word. I wasn't good at English, but just bear with me. Let's make it a word. Stingingly. Whoever sows with a stingy heart will also reap a stingy harvest. But those who sow generously will reap generously. You know, I've discovered this and I I love the power of generosity. But I think about all the things that are happening in the world. And I think about all the people that audacious church are impacting in communities, in different places, in different suburbs, in all the campuses that are watching online. I think about all the people that we are able to reach, but it all comes back to generosity. So in other words, you think that you're giving to a person, you may be thinking that you're giving to a building, but you are giving back to God what He deserves. So what happens in a way is He releases blessing on others. So your generosity, I've discovered that your generosity can unlock someone else's breakthrough. Your generosity can unlock someone else's victory, calling and destiny. That's the power of generosity. I've got an amazing story of someone else being generous to me. I said, I grew up in a crazy family, but I, when I got saved and I encountered God in a powerful way, I felt God tell me to do two things. I felt Him tell me to quit the sport that I was playing and I was getting paid. I was, getting, I was playing semi-professional, um, a semi-professional sport in Australia. It was the only thing that I ever was good at. That's why I graduated in year 10. Come on, somebody. And I was playing the sport and I dropped everything for it. And then I remember telling God telling me, hey Noah, I need you to quit that and I need you to do Bible college. And I said this last service, but it was like there was an angel and then a devil. Except I thought there were two devils speaking to me saying, do Bible college. And I'm like, I'd never heard the voice of God before in my life. 
But what I did know is that I knew that the enemy, the devil, did not want me to do Bible college. So I was like, I don't think this is you, God. Anyways, I go home and I tell my family, I say, hey, I know this sounds so weird, but I feel like God wants me to quit the sport that I'm playing and wants me to do Bible college. And their response was this. They kicked me out of home. I had nowhere to live. And they said, pack your bags and get out of our house. I had nowhere to live. I had no money. I had no job. The only thing that I was ever good at was sport. And so I'd found myself in a dark place. But as I came to church, there was this amazing Filipino family. One of my best friends now, his name's Uzziah. And I, and, I, and I told him about my story and he said, my family wants you to come and live on our couch. You can stay with us as long as you need. And for a whole entire year, I slept on this family's couch. For a whole entire year, I was afraid. For a whole entire year. But what happened was, in that whole entire year, my whole calling was revealed. My destiny was revealed. My my. Here, my wife was revealed to me. Come on, somebody. And all of a sudden, someone else's generosity was like a key to unlock a door of destiny over my life. And I would not be here and I would not be doing what I'm doing if a family wasn't generous enough to open up the doors of their home, to allow me into their house, to sleep on their couch. See, your generosity can unlock. It can open up a door for someone else to break through. You're not just giving your time, your money, your efforts, your serving, but you're not just, what's happening is you're sowing. And the Bible tells us when you sow with a generous heart, you will reap the generosity of what you sowed. Who wants to reap a generous harvest in this place? How do you live a blessed life? Well, you live in the presence of God, but then you live a generous life. But then there's another thing that also comes with generosity is obedience. To be obedient to God. How do you live in the blessings of God? Well, that's very simple. You continue to be obedient to Him. You know, when I I, I told this story before and I love telling this story, but I'm very good at buttering up people. You know what that means? Like I'm very good with telling people how good they look. I'm, I'm very good with telling people and making people feel better. You know what I'm saying? Reedy. Nah, I can't do it to you again. Jokes, I can because you're amazing. And you know, Reedy, I, I thought about this before. I was like, wow. Those glasses, the way your hair is, oh, you know. Your head is, yeah, yeah. Oh. The way the light strikes, it's beautiful. You are an incredibly handsome man. Thank you. And then, you see what I did? Very, I told you I'm good. Like, then I look at Jaden over here. And I'm like, man, oh, how come you don't have a girlfriend here? You are so incredibly handsome. You're an amazing looking young man. In fact, could you stand up for me, Jaden? Wow. <laughs> he would, I'm sorry, you would hate that, my bad. But see what I did? You know, with my father in law, being my senior pastor at the same time (laughs) and me marrying his daughter. I had to do a few things, you know what I'm saying? I I had to say a few things, exactly. So young ladies in here, right? And young men, you know. I need you to understand something. I'm about to teach you some game. I'm about to spit some fire. So, my father-in-law had to do a few things. 
And uh, I didn't tell this last, last service, but I used to say, wow, oh, have you been working out? <laughs> Whoa, I can see you. I, I can see the hard work. <laughs> you look like you've lost some, you know, you've shred some pounds and some stones. You look really good today. You know, there'd be little things where he would say, oh, I hate, I hate salad. I'm like, oh yeah, me too. I hate salad as well. <laughs> it's the worst. I would never eat it. He's like, oh yeah, man. I'm, yeah. And be like, oh, I hate the way that this happens. I'm like, yeah, me too. Thinking about it now, I really hate that. <laughs> He's talking about political stuff. And I'm like, what the heck? I don't even know what that is. But I just agreed. I joined in. There'd be other things like, you know, he'd be talking about, or I'd ask him a question. I'd be like, oh, do you like tomatoes? And he'd be like, no, I'm not a fan. I'm like, yeah, neither. I actually hate them. I really, <laughs> I really don't like them at all. Yeah, thinking about it now, I've never eaten any of those things. I don't want any of them. You know, these are the, these are the ways. So just learn, young men and women right here. That's how you do it. That's how you get in and you break through to the promised land. Come on, somebody. I'm in the promised land. So anyways, yeah. Anyways, I used to do, I used to do all these funny things just to be able to get on as good books, you know. And as I grew up and as I understood this, I discovered it. Really what I was doing was I was aligning myself with his will. You know, I asked Pastor Russell, which you would know him as, I asked him and I would ask him all the time. I would ask him after we, Amy and I started dating for about six months, I said, are we able to get married? And he's like, well, you need to work on some things. And that hit me because I'd done all that work for nothing. <laughs> nah, I didn't, not really. But he's like, no, you gotta work on some things. You gotta work on this, 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 and this. And I said, yeah, okay, what was I doing? I had to align myself. Really, I had to align my thinking, my maturity, the way I acted, the way I did certain things. And what happened was, is as soon as I aligned myself with the will of my father, what happened was the blessing flowed. And this is the exact same thing with obedience to God. I'm not just talking about a certain amount that you should give, but I'm talking about being obedient and lining yourself with the will of God in your forgiveness. Some of us harbour things for too long, but we need to let go because how can you hold on to the blessings of God if you're holding on to the things that you're holding on to? You need to let go so that you can receive. You need to throw off so that you can put on. If you wanna live a blessed life every single day, which is available to you and I, for you and I, we ought to be a people that live in His presence, people that are generous, but people that are obedient to God. When was the last time you were obedient? When was the last time that you paid for someone else's food? When was the last time you stepped out in faith and obeyed the word of the Lord that He gave you? When was the last time you were obedient in your workplace reaching out to that person? When was the last time that you were obedient to God? Because that there can either allow you to continue and propel you into the blessings and the favour and living an abundant life or it can stop you. Live an abundant, but an obedient life with God. Living in the blessed life is living an obedient life. There's this other thing to live a blessed life and live in an abundant life is to be thankful. You know, I was so thankful when that family took me in. See, this is why people look at me so funny all the time when I shout or when I'm really passionate about certain things and people give me stale faces. But the reality is, is that you weren't there when I was on that couch. And the reality is, is that you weren't there when I was crying myself to sleep. And nobody was there for me, but God was. And so I might not have had a bed to sleep on, but I'm sure thankful that I had a couch to sleep on and I had a sheet to cover me when it was cold at night. I was sure thankful that I had food in my belly every single day when no one else looked after me. See, some of us can't be thankful and find it hard to be thankful because we're always looking at the things that we do not have. 
audacious church, you ought to understand and you ought to remember the good things that God has done for you. I know some of you that have been saved from hell. I know some of you that have been saved from the pits of the earth. I know some of you that God took you out of your mess and brought you into the promised land. If God has saved you and if God has redeemed you, I want you to clap your hands in this place. If God has redeemed you, clap your hands like He's redeemed you. People tell me to quiet down all the time. People tell me to just relax, but I can't because you don't know, because I, no, no, because I know what God has taken me out of. <laughs> so I laugh when people do that <laughs> because you don't understand. And, and no one will ever know those moments. But I've got a thankful heart and a grateful heart because when my family wasn't there for me, He brought a family around me that loved me and cared for me. God is good and He's good all the time. Here's what we're gonna do. Stand to your feet in this place. Something powerful is gonna happen and this is what's gonna happen. You're gonna step into this abundant life if you want to. You know how to step into it. You gotta be in His presence, we're here. Live in generosity, you live a life of generosity, be obedient, but then be thankful. We close our eyes and we lift our hands to the Lord. There are some things that God has done for you and maybe you don't have a lot of reasons to be thankful for. I sure didn't when I was on that couch and no one was there for me. But I was thankful that there was a God who loved me. But no one else did. I was thankful that God healed my broken heart. I was thankful that He set me free from addiction. So although I didn't have the things that I wanted, I praise God that I wasn't who I used to be, that I wasn't where I used to be. So in this place, I just want us to close our eyes. And I want you to think of some things that you're thankful for. Because as soon as you put thankfulness on your lips, what happens is you activate and you start to begin to and you step into this blessing and the abundance that God has for you. God has blessings. God has abundance. God has overflow for you today. Now keep thinking of those things that you're thankful for. Just keep beginning to think. Maybe He saved you from a, a, a relationship. Maybe he, he, he provided for you. Maybe God um, uh, gave you a certain amount of money. Maybe God did certain things for you. I want you to be thankful that. I want you to have that in your head right now, right now, right now. We thank you, Father, you are good. And you are good all the time. We thank you. Now look here. I want us to go find two people and the things that you're thankful for, I want you to go tell two people whether they're around you, whether you know them or not. And I want you to turn to them and I want you to tell them the things that you're thankful for. Are you ready to do that? I mean, you might not be used to doing that, but I want you to do on the count of three, I want you to find two people and I want you to tell them three things that you're thankful for. Are you ready to do that? You wanna live an abundant life? You wanna live a blessed life? Five of us, I said, who wants to live a blessed life? Then we're gonna thank God with our words. So I want you to go find three people. One, two, three, go. Just find two people, go, 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 go. And tell them what you're thankful for. Go ahead, go ahead. Come on, let's fill this place with thankfulness. God is good and He's always been good to you. You ought to remember the good things that God has done. Even if you've got breath in your lungs, you are 
worthy to be praised, God. Even if you woke up this morning, God is worthy to be praised. He's worthy of all the praise, all the glory and all the honour. Now all across this place, will we lift our hands and sing You're Worthy. space for a moment of response. And Pastor Noah has just preached powerfully on living in the abundance. And how we get access to the abundance is through a relationship with Jesus Christ. Jesus makes a way for us to have access to a relationship with a Father who wants to bless you and pour out an abundance on you. But the first step is making Jesus your Lord and Saviour. It's saying, I can't do this on my own. I need a Saviour. And Noah shared when he was 17 years old, he made a decision just like this. He was broken, hurting, lost. But then he made a decision to follow Jesus and He aligned Himself to live in the abundance. And you're here today. If you don't have a relationship with Jesus, we wanna give you a chance, an opportunity to say, yes, I need Him in my life. So here's what we're gonna do. Every eye closed, every head bowed. It's a moment of privacy between you and God. If you're here and you know you don't have a relationship with Jesus, Maybe you've made a decision like this before in the past, but you know you've not been living for Him. Maybe this is the first time you've ever made a decision like this. This is your chance. So I'm gonna count down from three, and then I want you to boldly put your hand up in the air, saying, I need Jesus. In three, God loves you. He's for you. He created you. In two, He's got good plans for your life. He's got abundance for you. In one, lift your hand right now if that's you. Hands going up, lift it up so I can see it nice and high. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Keep it high. This is your declaration. Yeah. Three more seconds. Don't miss this chance. There's someone else in this room. Don't miss this chance. Your heart's racing. Bible says that God knocks on the door of our heart and waits for us to answer. This is you answering. Last second. Yeah, yeah. I'm glad I waited. Thank you, Jesus. You can put your hands down. Here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna pray a prayer all together. If you just put your hand up, I want you to pray with everything you've got. Repeat this with me, church. Dear Lord Jesus, come on, everyone all together. Dear Lord Jesus, I believe you are real and I can see now that you love me. I know I'm not perfect and I've made some mistakes. So right now I ask for your forgiveness. I believe that you died on a cross for me, but then you rose from the dead. So I wanna stop living my way and invite you into my life. I wanna trust and follow you as my Lord and Saviour. From now on, my life is yours. I'm aligning myself with you. I'm gonna live for you, amen. Come on, it says all of heaven rejoices. 
It says all of heaven rejoices when one person makes a decision like that. Let me just say that it's the greatest decision that you will ever make. And we don't wanna just leave it here. No one walking around for me. Just stay where you are for one second. We don't wanna just leave it here in this moment. We wanna help you and equip you. So we've got a book of the Bible. It's the book of Mark. It's the story of Jesus' life. It's his, it's his ministry and everything that he taught. We wanna put this in your hand. It's beautifully designed. One of the team is gonna give this to you now. But if they don't, please go to the Connections Lounge out the door on the right. Meet some of the team. Talk about maybe what your next steps look like. If you're new as well today in church, you can also head there. But I want to encourage you, church is not done for today because we're coming back tonight at 5.30. And let me say, you do not want to miss this. Pastor Noah is preaching a totally different message, a message just for tonight. And also I've heard that he might be leading us in praise as well. I've heard that I think He wants to lead us into some praise. So young people, fearless is still going on. It's happening tonight. It's happening right now. Older people, you can experience the, what happened at fearless tonight with some praise and worship. Do not miss this. Come back, change your plans if you have to. Be in the room. Don't underestimate the power of just being in the room. And tonight, it's going to be special. Arrive at 5, have a coffee, bring some friends. 5.30, it's going to be incredible. Pastor Noah, brand new message. Praise and worship. Amen. Have a great afternoon. We'll see you back here at 5. Have a coffee. See you soon.